Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime. Before I get into this monolith soft news, I want to remind you we have a giveaway going on right now for a Switch OLED, a PlayStation 5, or an Xbox Series X. It is a console of choice for one lucky winner. Just head to our Gleam.io link down in the pinned comment or to the description to enter. Now, we have a couple things we're going to talk about. The first thing is the actual news, the real headline. We're going to be talking about monolith soft probably teasing some sort of announcement coming here in February, likely at a Nintendo Direct if I just had to give my personal opinion. But we'll get into why we think they're teasing something here in a little bit. And then the second part is just going to be addressing uh, that last video <laughs> I put up, which was a lot of fun, but obviously uh, some people really enjoyed it and some people didn't. That's, that's the way those kind of videos are going to go when you do something different at your channel. Uh, that being said, let's get right into the news. And Monolith Soft might be teasing something, or at least it appears that they're teasing something. Remember, their last brand new game was back in 2017 when they released Xenoblade Chronicles 2. They have released Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition since then as well, but that's obviously not a brand new game. So here is what they had to say, or at least what we have noticed, uh, some fans have noticed, because something in particular has happened to their website. So on January 21st, uh, Yosemuri Mitsuda said on Twitter that he's been working on a project that will be announced this month and this month was a reference to February Japanese you know the English translations aren't exact but he was referencing that they're going to be announcing something in February now this was obviously a big deal because this is someone directly from monolith soft so already they told us they're announcing something we just don't know what um, on the same day monolith soft announced that on January 31st you might not be able to access their website due to server maintenance now, obviously that happened that's in the past the website is bright now and has a completely new design so obviously the server maintenance might have had to do with launching this brand new website at the bottom of the website it now says copyright 2022 monolith software before it said 2017 we all know 2017 was the last time they released a game, so this really is adding up to, okay, why revamp the website now if you're not going to launch a game right now? Uh, in the news section of the website, they deleted all previous news that existed from 2017 all the way through last month, and now there are only four news articles. One of them says that February 28th, they will integrate Monolith Soft Kyoto Studio in with Monolith Soft, the main company, on Twitter and Facebook, which makes me think they will announce their new game or release date of Breath of the Wild 2 or both this month. They have been working on their new game for four years since the release of Xenoblade 2, which is true. They also have multiple teams, a team working on Breath of the Wild 2. That's why they mentioned Breath of the Wild 2 because Monolith Soft is going to have a huge credit on that game, so it's possible that that actually gets talked about this month as well, although that's more speculation. I think it's probably more likely we see Xenoblade Chronicles 3 or maybe even the new IP that we know they've been hiring for for many, many years, even before Xenoblade Chronicles 2, dating back to the Wii U days. So, yeah. It definitely looks like they're doing something. They completely revamped their website. The copyright has now changed uh, to 2022 when clearly the copyright still existed in 2018, 2019, 2020, and 2021. But why didn't they have their update on the website? Because they didn't need to. Because the last new game they released was in 2017. So it definitely sounds like a new Monolith Soft project is coming this year. And obviously we have the fact that uh, they basically told us already that we're supposed to be getting news this month. So what is that news going to be? I am guessing we are getting a Nintendo Direct. Now, this is a little interesting because seven of the last 10 years, Nintendo has done a Nintendo Direct in February. Last year, I think it was February 17th last year, maybe it was the 19th. You guys can correct me on that. Uh, but it does appear that we are going to get some major news from Monolith Soft this month. I'm literally expecting some game. I don't think it's going to be Breath of the Wild 2. I, I honestly think if that does still come out this year, it's going to be later in this year and they will start talking about it and hyping it up in the summer. Although they did give Breath of the Wild a nine month campaign. So they could start the hype train now for Breath of the Wild 2. So that is possible that that's all this is about. Hey, look, we're going to be talking about that. But he said a new project is going to be announced. Uh, that's not new. We already know about that game. It's been shown twice now. We don't know what their new IP is, and obviously we don't know what Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what this new Monolith Soft project is. Again, I would fully expect it to be in a Nintendo Direct. You guys can guess when a Direct will be February 10th, February 17th. They seem to do mid-February dates like that, but I don't know. I guess time will tell. I don't think we're going to have to wait long. It's already February 1st, so it's really cool that we got some really nice news to round out and end our day. Now, to address my last video. Uh, for those who didn't see it, you don't have to go watch it. I made a video uh, which was a spoof. It was a skit about Nintendo buying Capcom. It spent about four-ish minutes, about four and a half minutes, um, 
basically spoofing that I work for Nintendo, getting on the phone, doing various phone calls, and offering to buy Capcom on Nintendo's behalf for $5.2 billion. It was, it was clearly a joke. Um, the joke was obviously a play on all the acquisitions happening at the moment. Microsoft, Sony, now EA is trying to get into the game as well. So there, there's obviously a lot of acquisitions going on. And so people didn't appreciate uh, being clickbaited into a joke video. Uh, a joke video, by the way, that wasn't even like a different type of video and then the title. It was that the title was explaining a skit that was going to happen. And maybe you could argue, at least in the thumbnail, I could have did something to indicate it was a joke. Maybe... The Doge Dog or something. I, I I don't really know, but I had a lot of fun with that. And there were some people that loved the fact that they got baited into a joke. Uh, and there were obviously a lot of people that didn't like it. Uh, people also make incorrect assumptions about videos like that. They think I create them just to get easy views and money. Um, I'm not, I don't know if they realize how uh, YouTube works, and 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 that's okay. Um, it doesn't really matter what the views you got. I'll give an example. The highest viewed video I have is a video with over 2 million views uh, that is Reggie saying my body is ready, right? Like that's that's our channel that uploaded that video and created that meme. But here's the thing. While it's got 2 million views, it's made less than $50. That doesn't seem right, 2 million views. Because because what you have to understand about ads is they really care about watch time. And when you're making a video that's highly clickable, that is clearly a joke and people find out it's a joke literally right after they click on the video the first line in the description says no nintendo did not buy capcom for 5.2 billion i wasn't hiding that it was a joke uh once people realize that they click off and the average watch time ends up being like 90 seconds uh and when you have an average watch time like that this video could get um 10 billion views and it's only going to make like five dollars so i want to be clear the video wasn't made to make money the video wasn't made to even drive subscribers videos like that actually lower subscribers people get pissed and they hit the unsubscribe button uh, so it didn't exist to make money because that's not how YouTube works they want you to have extended watch time that's how you make money it's not necessarily just about views views alone get you dog shit if you don't have watch time my body is ready is only a 30 second video can't get watch time ergo it doesn't make money same thing is happening with this video it's only gonna make I'd be surprised if it made more than two dollars and fifty cents I'm not kidding like <laughs> it's insane uh, YouTube, I wish they paid better, but that, that video doesn't exist to make money. So you might go, okay, Nate, so what's the point of that video? To have fun. So I understand that you could argue there's there's a little uh, journalistic integrity that needs to exist in my channel, knowing that people follow my channel for news. And when you do something like that, it's going to piss people off because it's out of character for the channel. And we're not a comedy channel. Like if this was The Onion and I made a video like that, nobody would dislike it because that's the kind of content they expect from a, you know, from a source like The Onion, but I'm not that. So I do need to be a bit more conscientious of why I have a following on YouTube. But also at the same point, I'm not going to apologize. I hope people weren't looking for an apology. I don't think people were asking for one either, to be clear. Um, I make the video content I want to make, and I had an idea for a skit that I thought would make for a really funny video, so I did it. Not everyone's going to appreciate the comedy. Not everyone's going to appreciate uh, the click bait or whatever you want to call it. Uh, but I had fun with that video. Now, am I going to do a ton of these videos over the year? No. Like, you might expect a video like that to drop on April 1st, and then it wouldn't even get all those dislikes, right? But people see that video drop on February 1st, and they go, oh, man, it might be real. And if you guys know anything about Nintendo, they would never spend $5 billion on any company. They would never spend a billion dollars on any company nintendo doesn't spend their money that way so to me putting capcom in the title mentioning five billion dollars was to me already obvious indicators that this wasn't real right like i didn't think i needed to make it more obvious than that but i guess because of the money sony throws around and the money microsoft throws around and the money ea might be throwing around soon uh, you know people think nintendo just has that kind of money too they don't. Yeah, Nintendo's got $10 billion sitting in a bank. The last thing Nintendo's going to do is get rid of their war chest to buy a company that's that risky of a purchase that cannot guarantee it'll ever pay itself off. So, yeah, Nintendo doesn't make choices like this. Nintendo might buy studios, but, like, they bought Retro Studios for a million dollars, guys. I, I, I think the purchase of uh, Monolith Soft was uh, around $299 million, something like that, which is a lot of money for Nintendo, but Nintendo doesn't spend that much like 299 million is like the cost to make breath of the wild 
Like, Nintendo doesn't spend billions of dollars on acquisitions. Just because everyone else is doing it doesn't mean Nintendo's going to do it too. So I thought it was pretty obvious that it wasn't real, but um, and that it was just going to be a joke. And I literally started off on the phone like with Miyamoto telling me to go buy Capcom. So, like, one, Miyamoto wouldn't be the one making the decision. It'd be Shinjiro Furukawa, and two, they would not use me as a mediator. Uh, that makes no sense. They're Japanese companies. Why would Japanese people talk to Japanese people? Why would they hire someone in the U.S. to negotiate in Japan? That makes no sense. But neither here nor there. I don't think it was the skit that bothered people. It was obviously the title and the thumb. And um, I am sorry if it did upset you. Um, I'm not going to apologize though, for making the video. I, I have to do things sometimes like this to be sane. Um, I love what I do here on YouTube. I love delivering the news and talking in depth about it. In fact, we have a nice little podcast happening uh, tomorrow night um, or tonight, whenever you watch this, uh, Wednesday evening uh, with Jake Randall. And we, we have a lot of really great topics to talk about that I can't wait um, and we're super excited for. But along the way, when you're covering the news and you're making these interesting topics and these discussion videos, every now and then I, I, I like to do something different. You know last night or the night before here i did a live stream with a wheel of death that made me do like shots of like hot sauce like this uh louisiana hot sauce here or like um i had a, you know instead of like the usual alcohol shots spun the wheel and i had a prank call eric you know from the nintendo prime podcast there was a lot of fun things that i was just doing that's different uh than my usual live stream and i like to try different things here and there most of the time, things don't stick around. I've done a series called um, Arguing With Yourself, where I played two different characters arguing two different points about Switch, both in docked mode and handheld mode. Uh, I thought that was a really fun video, but it didn't come together as well as I wanted. And obviously, you see that series died after that. You guys have seen Prime News come and go a billion times, because uh, I really like the concept of Prime News, but the viewership is not really there for it. Uh, and I, you know, I, I, I really like things like just making some comedy sketches once in a while and having fun. Um, and unfortunately on a channel that doesn't do a lot of those comedy sketches, um, it doesn't slap the same way that it would on a channel that does. That doesn't mean that there's not funny, although I could argue I'm not a very funny person, but you know what I mean? Like it, it, it comes across as this is real news and then you feel hurt because you fell for something that was intended as a joke, but you don't take that kind of stuff as a joke. You don't take companies buying other companies as a joke, especially in the landscape now where everyone's buying companies, which is why I thought the joke was perfect for now because this is the landscape that exists. So it's kind of funny to think Nintendo would start spending money like they're big ballers when they're not. So I don't know. I, I was just having some fun. You guys aren't going to get videos like that from me very often. I think the last time I had fun like this, was uh, the last day of 2021 when I put out a video said this is the end um, where people thought I was quitting YouTube. Um, it was really interesting uh, that that was the presumption when you say this is the end. Uh, but uh, it was really this is the end and then the end of that sentence was of 2021. Um, I thought it was quite a clever title. A lot of people didn't appreciate it and I lost a bunch of subscribers. So you might go Nate you post a video up that's not going to make money. Um, you post a video up that makes you lose a lot of subscribers. I wouldn't be surprised if I wake up tomorrow and we've lost 150 to 200 plus subscribers. That happens. So why post it? And there's a couple reasons. One, because I liked it. I had fun making it. It was one of the most fun that I had editing a video in quite some time. And I make content that I want to make that I want to watch. So. If somebody else, let's say Spawnwave, had done a similar video and totally baited me in and there was a skit, I would actually enjoy that video and enjoy watching it. So I make videos that I would want to watch. You might not want to watch them, but I would. Uh, on top of that, it also kind of helps thin out the crowd. Um, we get a lot of subscribers because of our giveaways and other stuff like that. And we have a lot of people that don't actually like my content. They just want to win something. Uh, I'm not accusing any individual person of that, but I think it's a general sense that when you do giveaways uh, that you gain a subscriber base that really just cares about the giveaway and they don't care about you and they don't care about your content. Uh, so when you upset them in this way, it makes them go, screw this channel, I'm out. They obviously don't know me. 
And that's okay that they don't know me. They probably have only seen a couple of videos. Maybe they caught a live stream. They don't really know me. They don't really know that like, obviously I'm just having fun and that I like to have fun, that I drink on live streams. There was somebody on Twitter today who complained because um, they stopped watching my channel after I got drunk on New Year's Eve and then said the stream would end in 10 minutes and then it lasted for another three hours. And I kept thinking to myself, why did they care that it lasted another three hours? There was no giveaway happening that was waiting till the end of the stream. So they didn't have to stick around for three hours. Who cares? I could have kept streaming for another 20 hours. Who, who, who cares? Just because I said 10 minutes and it went longer than 10 minutes, a lot longer. Yeah, because I thought the stream was going to end when my fiance got home. I had no idea my fiance was going to stick around and we were going to keep streaming for hours. So yeah, I, you know, it, it, it's a situation where I'm just having fun, guys. And so videos like that are going to continue to exist. That being said, um, I'm not going to make them very often. All right. You, mean, you might see two or three per year. It is nice to weed out the crowd and it is nice to, uh, I don't know, just have some damn fun. I'm so, I'm so busy talking serious crap about gaming all the time. Sometimes I just got to have some fun and I, I have fun playing games, but I mean fun in my everyday content. Anyways, thank you so much for tuning in. Let me know your thoughts on this monolith soft stuff and I'll catch you in the next video.